So it doesn't show the menu, but it's this menu. Oh, well. nice. So we can hide that. Nice. So pretty much you're yeah. So we'll start it. Okay. So that they'll hear these conversations. <laughs> no. Oh, we're moving. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think um, if you can, um, either let me know once you're finished, um, or you can press stop recording. Yeah, or just press stop yeah. recording. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, that should send it my way, and I can share it with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Is, is this everybody? <laughs> no, but also from Tutor's side, are the others not going to come? Or? Should I stop? No, I'll just say some okay. Uh, your PDF? Uh, my PDF. You can Grab a chair, grab a chair from there, yeah. There's more chairs over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go around to the other side if you want. There's one more monitor. Yeah, so they're all connected. They're showing all the same thing.
I am much. Oh. I like. Hello, hello again for two days in a row. So long sleep on these girls. Yeah. Oh. So you were like, yeah, we were like downstairs. Hello. Okay. Then I think we've got closer. As well? Okay, good. I just um, uh, um, Mia already introduced the book to us, and I thought it might be good to get the content here. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Are you teaching me that one? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know. I reckon leave that out. Fine. Are we supposed to go up there? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> I might not. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, Karamia's first uh, lecture. Um, so what we're going to do now after this lecture is running the first pre-introduction to the four workshops that we will be running in a 14-day cyclus. Yeah? Uh, I think Karamia will already have introduced you to the scheme of how we are going to do this. What I thought was just giving a little bit more introduction into the workshops itself, uh, introducing the tutors in real, not just by picture. And um, uh, I would like to spell out a little bit what the actual focus is on this, on this uh, media paper um, and why we are doing this. I don't want to spend too much time on it because then we've got Davis who will run a first tutorial that will, on Rhino that will enable you to do the first exercise. Yeah, so we've got uh, four workshops that uh, that will be rotating through, that we will be rotating through in, in a two-week cyclus. Uh, you guys have already been divided up into groups, um, and you will join each workshop, um, which are running in parallel, and we've got two tutors each allocated. So the first workshop, uh, first, I mean, that's not the order, they're all running in parallel, but uh, one workshop is about 3D scanning, and here we've got Grace and Oliver, Uh, hi, um, I'm Oliver. I'm currently in my fifth year um, of my master's, so I'm starting my thesis this year. Um, yeah, looking forward to meeting you all. And hi, I'm Grace, and currently in my fourth year. And yeah, happy to see you guys. Okay, cool, thanks. And then we've got Digital Fabrication uh, by John He and Nicholas. Nicholas is currently still in Japan, but John He is here. Hey guys, so my name's Gonhee, and I um, hope to see you guys soon, uh, two weeks' time. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, and the next workshop is Virtual Reality um, with Celine and Erica. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Erica. I'm a fifth year master's student, and I'm starting my thesis this year. Um, I hope you all will find Media One really fulfilling. And also, good luck. <laughs> yeah. 
everyone, I'm Selene. I'm one of the tutors for the VR workshop, and I look forward to meeting you guys in the workshop. Okay, cool. And um, the last workshop is Augmented Reality uh, with Menoina and Kenny. Hi, I'm Kenny. I'm currently in my fifth year, and I look forward to teaching you guys. Hello, everyone. I'm um, Manognya. I'm just starting my PhD here, and look forward to getting to know you guys. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. So we've been running this type of system for three years now. Um, the first um, two years were a little bit difficult because we were interrupted with COVID, and it has to be partially online. Um, so this year, we are really looking forward to have everyone here and to be able to communicate in person and have the ability to use all the facilities that we have here at the school. Um, the strategy that we are after with this media paper is we want to give you an understanding how physical and digital world are related to each other. So you see that um, these workshops that we are running are referencing to what we are attempting to bring across. The 3D scanning workshop is all about bringing a physical model into the digital world and manipulating it there. The um, digital fabrication workshop is about producing something three-dimensional in a computer inside, and the question, how do we get this outside, and how do we make this something physical? The um, virtual reality workshop goes all the way into immersive worlds, and we are trying here to figure out what can we do with immersive worlds which have different types of rules, different types of physics. There's theoretically no gravity in there unless you are applying it. Uh, there is no scale to it. You can operate in all types of scales. So we're trying to test these type of ideas there. And the last, last one is the augmented reality workshop where we will be using, in our case, tablets and your phones to augment digital information on physical objects, on physical objects and uh, materials. Yeah? Um, the last thing here, number five, is an all-group exercise where we'll, you will be asked to summarize everything in a classical two-dimensional uh, portfolio format, and we'll be running some introduction workshops about layout programs on this as well. Can you click one more further down? One thing that I want to make really clear with this media paper is when we are working with these prototypes and models, and um, they will be all around like 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, so relatively small, these are not, these are one-to-one -one objects, so they do not represent architecture. So do not design a building. They do not represent something else from what they are. If it's a cardboard model, it is a cardboard model. If it's a plastic model, it's a mo model out of plastic. It is not something that you imagine yourself to be inside. Yeah? So um, we want to make this really clear. It's not a substitution for something else. We are dealing one-to-one -one with materials, one-to-one -one with this scale, and um, we are testing our ideas in a one-to-one -one scale. So we're not interested in any metaphysical explanations about how we save the world with uh, energy-saving ideas that could be applied to this if someone else built it. So the model is the model, the digital is the digital, it's one-to-one, -one. it's 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, except for the VR where you don't operate in the scale. Um, the first exercise will be Leading into these, uh, into these uh, four design studios, uh, we will give a short introduction into uh, Rhino, um, and this should enable you to build a model out of paper, 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. Shape doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to look like an architectural building. Better it doesn't actually. It's just some kind of shape. And there are, either, there are two ways to do this. Either you build your object first and transport it into uh, into the digital, so into the drawing program, or you do the drawing first, and this is how uh, Davis will uh, introduce it to you today. Uh, you go the other way around, and, um, and you create a digital model, you print it out of paper, and then you cut it out, materialize it as an object. 
Keep it simple. It's just really a first exercise to get started. Um, I would also like to outline that this is really just a short introduction. There are more tutorials online on the DRH uh, webpage. Uh, the DRH team and Luke Schwager is standing in the back there, who is the coordinator of DRH, um, is there to help as well. But we do not teach um, any software here. Yeah? So this is, we're giving certain introductions, but it's up to you to find tutorials online and so on to get a deeper understanding of um, of a drawing program. Reason for this is there's so many drawings programs around, there are different preferences, they're all changing all the time, and this is just a standard. And as we are in the university, we are more interested in how to use these things rather than how to teach something like a cut program. Okay, um, thanks to the tutors, then we will see you guys so Carmia had a lecture this week. There's no lecture next week, she just told me. And we will then start with the uh, tutorials at, um, at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, um, down on level one in your studio space, except for uh, the VR studio, uh, which will be in 149. I'll send this out by uh, through Canvas again. OK, uh, any questions? Then I would hand over to Davis. Yeah. Um, hi, my name's Davis. I'll be going over you guys as just a basic understanding of Rhino. So it won't cover um, how to use all the things, but and, we'll... Oh, Davis, uh, one more thing. We're going to record this oh, uh, it's recording. session. It's recording. Yeah, no, yeah. it's just for the students. And we will put the recording on Canvas as well. We will also put this first task on Canvas. So uh, you have in your own time then the opportunity to go through this presentation again and, uh, and uh, complete this first exercise. Okay, okay. sorry. Cool. Um, I'll first kind of introduce Rhino and when you're opening it up uh, for the first time. Um, so you end up with this page at the beginning. You are to choose kind of a basic scale of your object. So you have large objects for meters, kind of larger objects, and then millimeters, and then small objects. Today we're working with small objects in the millimeters. And you can click it on here and open up the small millimeters. Um, if you did not open it and it just opens this up, you can go to help and then about Rhino and it'll show up this page again. And you can just click on it and it'll show up with the Rhino file. Um, for Rhino's interface, everything's kind of done on the command bar. So this bar is kind of like a search engine, kind of like Google, but it's basically searching for all the commands within Rhino. So say if you want a curve, it's able to say as um, a curve. So that's a curve. If you want like a box, you can search it up as box, and it'll show up as a box. And so it's searching for all of the commands on Rhino instead of trying to um, you know, figure out which objects is which, which commands which. Um, it's really useful because um, once you start, it asks you what kind of 3D, so a box, what kind of box you would like. Um, in terms of like, in terms of like diag dimensional, diagonal, so it goes either if you want a diagonal, you can look the command bar to figure out it's needed. So you can start three point, which is starting one point, two point, and three point to create a box. Um, that's the command bar. It's really useful in terms of figuring out what you need. So say if you want a triangle, tri triangle, um, or um, you can do cylinders. So cylinder circles, cylinders. Uh, cylinders, or you can just type it up. Um, basically what the command bar is, for normal shapes, it's just easier to use these ones here. But if it's complicated shapes, you can use, you can use the command bar to do all of the complicated kind of commands 
that's needed. Um, so I'll introduce how to use Rhino. So the left bar is to select. Uh, left bar is to select. So your left mouse click is to select objects. Um, selecting objects is left click. Um, right clicking on the mouse is to orientate around. And then if you press shift, it's pan. So shift and then left click, oh, right click is to kind of pan around. And to zoom in, it's just scrolling up and down. Um, yeah, that's kind of the basic. So select, uh, right click is to kind of orientate, rotate around the object, and then to zoom in and out, and then shift, and then right click is to kind of pan around. Um, so the interface has four views. You have your top view, your front view, your right view, and your perspective. Um, so for your perspective, uh, your top right, left, and right views are kind of just pan. So if you right click, right click, it will just pan instead of trying to, you won't be able to ro rotate kind of like that. But if you press shift on perspective, it will rotate because there's nothing to kind of orientate around. Um, there's different viewports, so you can kind of choose, if you want a right viewport, you can go to down the arrow right here. There's a little button and you can set, set view, and you can do front, back, left, right, top, or in two perspective and one perspective, and isometric views for you to model around. And you can set that for all the views here. You can also double click on to, to enlarge it, so if you click on perspective, and double click it, it will go back to normal. So double click to enlarge it so you can work on a bigger space. And then double click on perspective again to make it into the four views, the default four views. Um, within the views, there's different display modes. What's a display mode is it's basically how you're viewing the object. So you have a wireframe view, which is seeing the object in kind of x-ray form without any of the shading. You can go to right click on here and press shaded, which gives you a object which is shaded and it's a solid form, so you won't be able to see kind of the underneath. And then you have ghost uh, rendered view, which is a rendered version of the view. And then you have ghosted view, which is kind of shaded plus both the shading and then the inside where you can view inside of it. Um, there's also other ones you can play around with when you're model making. Um, usually we use either shaded or ghosted because it's you're able to see without the interruption of the ends if you're unshaded. And then if you want ghosted, you'll be able to see what's in the inside of it. Um, then we go on to kind of the bar at the bottom. Um, this bar at the bottom right here has kind of uh, commands to aid you to model make. So what that means is there's grid snap Grid snap allows you to kind of snap to the grid when you're model making. So you can see how it's snapping to each one like that. And that's useful if you're figuring out kind of the dimensions. You don't have to all, always rely on just like typing it in. You can see what grid it is and then just type it in like that. Um, there's also ortho. So what ortho does is make straight lines. Um, what that means is it's basically a straight line across. There's, you can only go 90 degrees one way and then 90 degrees one way. Um, or either you can go, you can turn off OFO and then just click on the normal and press shift and that will create the, it'll be the same thing as turning on OFO. You can see at the bottom if I press shift, OFO gets turned on and that way you can do straight lines. If awful is not turned on, it would just be, it wouldn't be straight. Um, then you have planar, which is kind of used for drawing on a single plane, but normally that isn't used, so I won't go over it as much. Um, o snap, um, O snap is kind of a more important tool because it's enabling you to select a, as a object. So as in within the object. So what that means is. If you press on end and you to make it's it's snapping to the end, 
So OSNAP is actually allowing you to recognize that the end is there, and without it on, it wouldn't show up. So um, you can see it's not showing up. So is end near, and then points. Points is basically one of these points here. Um, and then you have mid, which is basically the middle of the object, and then center, which is the center of an object, and then you have intersection, um, perpendicular, and then tangent, and then quadrant, and then knots is, um, I don't think it's used for this as much when you're model making, and then it's vertex. So that's kind of the basic functions you can select using it. So probably turn on, I'll make it turning on endpoints, mids, maybe not center, and then intersections and perpendicular when starting off. Um, and then there's gumball. Gumball is a command which allows you to see, to move the object without using any commands. So right now, gumball is off, and you are able to move the object until uh, perpendicular or sideways. If you turn on gumball, it shows up as this kind of scale object. So you're able to move in directions. So you know, red, move this way, and move up and down. Um, what's good about this is also can be very um, precise. So you can click on the arrow and type in 100, and it'll move at 100. And then you can also uh, wrote, scale the object. So that rectangle at the end is to scale the object. And if you press shift, it will rotate, scale all of the set sizes. So per all the sizes of the object. And then you have rotate. Rotating around, which is, and you can also click on it without dragging it. So if you click on it, and then it asks you for input. If you to just drag around it, you to drag around it, it doesn't need the input, it will just drag to wherever you want it to be. And if, if you press shift, it will lock it into 90 degree views. So shift, it will lock, rotate based on 90 degrees. Um, and then there's smart track. Uh, smart track basically just allows you to allows Rhino to let you know where you last was. So if say you have an end here, oh, let me turn on smart track. You have an end here, it allows you to see where the end was, and then if you have another end, it's, it's two ends, and then you'll be able to find a mid. So a smart track is allowing to see where you were before, and then where your object is, or to find like the mid or the quad, perpendicular points to it. Um, I'll go over the basic modeling the interface, or just the objects in general. So you have what's curves. So curves are basically just a line, and then you have different types of lines in here you can explore around, and they do different things. So you can explore around to see what types of curves you can draw. And you can do curves with these ones, and it's asking for points. You can draw curves like that. Or you can draw curves using just points within, and that will draw you a curve. You also have circles, uh, and then there's also circles with diameter. So you can explore around with it and kind of play around with there's an oval, these curves. Um, curves are really good because once you get a curve, you can use different commands. So our first command I'll show you is offset. So what offset allows you to do is offset that curve. So offset. And so if you're set as one, so on the top you can see all of the other commands there are. So you can choose distance. You know, you want 30 and it will offset 30 from there, from the original curve. And then the next one is joining two curves. So say you have two curves like this, and you want to join it because they're separate, and you want to join them, you just type in join, and select one curve, 
and then select the other curve and then press enter. And then now those two are joined together. Um, next one is trim. So say you have, you want to split this into two up into two. So you can use trim to kind of trim them apart. So trim and then select cutting object. So you select the cutting object, press space, and then you select the other object and it will trim it for you. Um, it will activate trim and you can still trim multiple things at once. Uh, and then the next one is split. So basically split is instead of trimming the object, it's just splitting it in half. So tr split, split, select the object to split. And then press cutting object. Oh, no. Split and then press, and then that's split in half now. And you see. Um, and then I'll, and then you can also rotate. So if you think of a command, you can rotate, and then you can start from a point, and you can rotate it around. Uh, you can also use this to do the gumball, but gumball only does the center. That's why you use kind of rotate because it allows you to select the end of it and then the other end and it's more controlled that way. Um, then I'll move on to scaling an object. Um, I will use a box for this. Uh, so scale, there's three types of scale. So you have your first scale, which does all directions. So you ask for a point and then the end of the point, it's scaling kind of three dimensionally. So every side, every angle. Then there is scale 2D. Scale 2D allows you to do two dimensional. So if I want to scale this side and this side, I can go here and here and I'll do two sides without doing the top. You can see it's not changing the top. And then you have scale, yeah, so those are the three scales. So it's scale, scale 1D and scale 2D. Um, then you have dupe edge, which is extracting kind of a corner. So say uh, um, dupe edge allows you to select the curve out from dupe edge or border. Dupe border allows you to select, you know, select the extract the solid into all curves. So dupe yeah, edge. So dupe edge allows you to select this point. And if you do dupe border, it's, so you can see, so there's the solid and now I have a curve from it. You can also do dupe border, which does the whole thing. And what it basically does is create, oh, no. I think it's not working. Um, then we have surfaces. So what a surface is, is basically a flat object from a 3D. The difference is a surface can be extruded upwards. So you can make it big and it'll show up as a, a poly surface. And then that's also the same as if you model kind of a poly extrusion. So this is called extrusion, but this is called a Poly surface, they do the same thing, but but this is extracted from a surface itself. So you can do kind of different shapes, like having four points like that, and then you can have a little surface. Now that surface can also be extruded upwards to make a <laughs> random shape out, out from there, or it can be extruded this oh, extruded this way to create a different shape. Um, if you ever kind of like lost your model somewhere here and you can't find it, <laughs> it's gone. You can, you can go select it from your other views and just press ZSA. And that allows you to zoom in to selected objects with the, in all the views. So basically bring your model back. So if you ever lose your object because you zoomed out too much and you can't see it anymore, you can just select it from one of these objects and press ZSA and they'll bring it back. Um, 
I will move on to modeling getting from a curve to a solid object. So we, we can use a circle, so that's a curve. You can use extrude, extrude curve. You can see if you just type in kind of half of the phrase, it will show up with all the commands. And you can just select which one. Extrude curve, and you see how at the top it asks you for if you want your output to be a, a surface, or sub D, and then there's directions. And then if you want it both sides, see how it's changing from one side to the one side. And then so this itself is a surface. But if you do it in, if you do it um, solid, it's basically capping an object. So, and then, okay, extrude curve, uh, that's a solid. What's the difference between, yeah, so that's extrude curve. And then what you can do is if, if you did like extrude it, extrude curve, if you did extrude it without a solid on, you can select the object and press cap. So cap allows you to just cap the object and you know, make it into a solid. Um, there's also a command called pipe. So say you have the circle and you can pipe the object. So pipe, that allows you to ask for a diameter of the object. So let's say 50 and then ask you for the other side and then it can do a little ring. You can also do it without the end object. So you can do curves, so like that, and then pipe, and then do like 30. And then you can do different sizes. So you can do 10 on the other side, and it will create kind of a slug. Yeah. Um, now we'll move on to Boolean. So Boolean is for editing kind of a 3D object. So here's your 3D object. There's three types of booleans. So I'll copy this. So the first boolean is boolean union. It's basically you have two different objects and you can combine them together. So boolean, boolean, union. Select the first object, and then select the second object, and it's joined together. You can see that within it is joined. So that's before, and that's after. Then there is Boolean difference. The Boolean difference is selecting, uh, subtracting one object from another. So Boolean difference. So you can click on one object, press enter, and you press the other one, and it's subtracting it from there. So you can see that again, so it's Boolean difference, selecting one object, and then selecting another object, and cutting it. So there you go, and then there's Boolean split. So it's basically, you have two objects, it's splitting both of the objects. Oh, yes, both of the objects. So Boolean split, and that's splitting it up. Oh, split, uh, so splitting is splitting one of the objects you choose first. So I'll show that again. So if you want to split this object using this object, you'll press Boolean, split, and then you select the object that you want to split, and then you click this one, you press space, and press the other one, and that will split the object into two. So now you have this component, but also the other component. Yeah, um, that's kind of the basic commands in Rhino. There's also other commands you can use. So say you want to isolate something. You can pre just type in isolate, isolate, and then it will isolate the object. And you can only work on that object. And it won't, if you have like a messy station where you have multiple objects at once, so say, yeah, I'm oh, um, just pressing Alt. So Alt allows you to do duplicate multiple objects. When you press Alt and then drag this, it just makes multiple of them. So say if you I want to work on this and this object, right? I can press Isolate, and then select the objects I want to isolate, and then press Space, and then that will just allow you to work on that object. 
And then if you want to, okay, I want to show back all the objects, you can just press show, and that's why you just use the command bar, and then you can show all the objects. There's also um, show selected, which allows you to select it, which allows you to select which objects you want to show. So maybe I just want to show that one again, and then only show that object. And if you press show, it'll show everything. Um, there's also grouping objects, so say, I want this and this, so I can drag it around and move it. I can press group, 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 and that will group that object. And you can move two objects at once in, instead of trying to select two always. And just move it so then it's grouped, it's always grouped, and then you can press ungroup to group. So just ungroup it, and then now it's two objects again. And you can do that with all of the objects, just group. I'll group all of the objects. You can also ungroup selected. So ungroup selected. Oh, no. Ungroup selected. Selected. Maybe not. Okay. Um, so for I'll move on to today's task for you guys, which is to create a 10 by 10 grid. Um, that's for, so when you're starting off, I probably would start off with just drawing curves to figure out where the perimeter of the box is. So I will start with maybe just a rectangle. And then I draw from here, and I'll do 100 by 100. And that's your kind of base to work on. What you can do is, Either, either kind of just drag this out and then move, and then you will rotate from here and rotate this. You can also type, if you want to move something, just type in move, and then it'll ask you for a point, and then you can just drag it across, and then that'll create a little box. There you go. So now you have a little box. Now you, what you can do is you can lock this box. What this means is basically um, it locks the object. So I'll show you what this looks like. So if you lock an object, it's, it's basically, it turns gray and you can't select it. And you can't move the object around. So lock. And that locks the object. And you won't be able to Move it around. You can just unlock. Oh, you can unlock the object from oh, yep. Yeah, so you can unlock the object just typing unlock in there, and it'll unlock the object. So okay, moving back to your little box. So what you can do is kind of explore around with the tools here, you know, you can start with maybe hexagon, or you can change the shape, you know, drag it up, and create a little bit smaller one, and press shift. You, what you can do is there's a command called loft, and loft allows you to loft from this curve to this curve, so loft. This sucks you for the select the curve. And then press, oh, press one curve and then press the other curve. And then ask you which way it goes. And then ask you to promote it. And if you press OK, you can laugh and create an object. Remember, once you laugh the object, since it's hollow, you have to press cap to cap it up to make sure it's a solid object again. Um, so I'll create some shapes. Cap this. And then do box and then so boolean 
difference. You know, cut this out. So now you kind of have basic shapes. You probably do better than me at kind of have more time to kind of explore around. But what I want you guys to, I want what I want to show you guys is today's command for the task, which is t taking your digital object into the kind of print it out into the real world. So what that means is there's a surf command called unroll surface. So unroll surface. Now it asks you for, when you start off, it asks you if you want to explode it, labels and key properties. So key properties is probably keeping the dimensions and proportions of the object. And then it's exploded if it's yes, it will create all the shapes. So it's what's basically doing is taking this part of the object, uh, this part, and it's splitting all of it. So it's splitting all of the parts out, and it's just un. So I'll show that again, unroll surface. And so if you press exploded, it's basically taking all the panels and lining out on the side. But if you do exploded no, it'll create a, a format for you to actually make this and put it back together if you print it out and put it back together on paper. Um, and so, okay, I'll do these two objects. So, un, so I'll show that again, unroll surface, unroll surface, and then, oh, labels. So what labels does is allow you to see where the points are, where it exploded. So you press yes. We'll show you what number one is compared to the model here. So number one has that corner. And so if you're exploding an object, you'll be able to see which point is which. So nine is there, and that's on top of there. So you'll be able to match from each one. And all of these labels can just be so see how this object is grouped? So I can go ungroup, group, and then now I can ungroup and select each part. So this is the poly surface. And I can just drag it out from there or just copy another one without it. Um, see how there's a mistake? There's not a mistake, but there's over... Oh. Uh, Change this to shaded. See how there's an overlap? Um, there's two objects in there, actually, because it's recognized it as the points here. It won't unroll if it's not kind of even. So if you have, what you need to do is called something called explode. What explode does is basically explode, load. What it does is basically explode it into a separate view. You can see that this one is connected to this, but it's also connected to multiple, it's overlapping. So you just have to drag it out and make sure you rotate it. So rotate it. Just move it back. This one. So if you are probably doing complicated shapes, uh, make sure that you can either split it up into different objects. So let's say if you are doing complicated shapes, you can do drag a surface. So use a surface and then just use a surface, rotate that surface 90 degrees and use it as kind of the section. So if you but that's where I want to cut. So if I cut this, it will be easier for the software to recognize this instead of being one object and it's all a mess and you don't know where anything is. You can split this up. So split. Split. So I can split this into two halves. So now, if I were to explode this, I mean, unroll surface. So if I were to unroll surface now, unroll surface, and I 
and off labels, and I'll unroll all. Be all of this. So we'll unroll this part, and then you can unroll this part, and then unroll this part, and then you can put it back together like that with individual parts if you do have a complicated surface. But if you have one of these ones, it's just a matter of trying to unroll everything. So what we now that you have kind of a basic form, we need to do is export it into Illustrator. So how to do that is you can make 2D. So make 2D allows you to, it's drawing all the curves from your surface. So this is your surface that you just unrolled. And if you say make 2D, it's basically flattening it. So I'll do no hidden lines. Group helpers, I think that's fine. And so make 2D. Oh, so, okay, before you make 2D, you just want to make sure that this, because it's grouped right now, you've got to explode again. Explode. So if you explode this object, there will be individual parts, and then it will be recognized as different surfaces. So if you make 2D, and then select the object you want, and then press OK, it will show off this. Now what you can do is since you have this, you can print, you can go into file, export selected, and and then under here you can press whatever software you want to export as. So you can export it as Adobe Illustrator, that's what we want. And then just name it something unroll. Um, there's also scale, so you can do one millimeter, two millimeter. Since we are working to one to one, it would just be one millimeter to one millimeter, and then press OK. So now that it's saved, you can go into Illustrator and open up that file. I think it's just in here. Up. So that one. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so before you open it, just make sure when you create a new file, um, it's on print and you're on A3. Just change it to landscape and press OK. So when you now open the file, there's your, ooh. Object, um, I don't know why it's, no. And a free create is a free. So this will be a free size. You can see. And then you can print this out and kind of just model model what was on this. So it's basically taking your three D model that you've made and transferring it into a digital object. I mean, a physical object from your di digital kind of fabricated object. Um, for, for saving your Rhino file, you can just save it and just save it as whatever name you want. And here, and then go and then just save it as a 3DM file. That's what normally is used for Rhino. Um, there's also layers within Rhino. So you can see here, we're modeling on default layer and then there's a make to D. So if you right click on that, you can select object or select sub object, and that's your make to D. So if you have like, say, multiple of these, you know, you with this explode, and then have make to D on this one, and maybe name it two, and you exploded this one out. You can also see that the layer creates a new layer. If you to make to D. On, I think, make to D. If you keep it on the same layer or select it as both of these, so you can see if I go select object, oh, select object and sub object, you can see that you can select both of them. So if you have multiple, you can do control and select all objects and you just export it that way. 
and just export it as an Illustrator file. Um, now, for the commands for today, there is a worksheet that's on Canvas for you guys to to use. So, you know, basic commands like trim, split, offset, scale, scale 1D, scale 2D, explode, extrude, curve, extrude surface, cap, pipe, boolean, union, difference, and split, and then make 2D, unroll surface, uh, CSA, which is to zoom, and full view. So, if you ever, if you ever in here, you can press full view. Basically, it's the same as double clicking on a perspective. Yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, there's also a lot of other stuff to explore within Rhino. Uh, there's Clipping Plane. So what Clipping Plane allows you to do is create a section. See that it creates a section and you just cut an object. Yeah. And then you can order this this way. Yeah, that's just if you want to see. So, so show this. If you want to see the inside of an object, you can cut it in half and see what it is on the inside. Yeah. I think that's, 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 it. that's it. Oh, there's also a full command bar, command list of mostly all of the commands you can try out. Um, that will be also uploaded onto Canvas. Right? Yeah. very much, Davis. Um, yeah, uh, we have recorded the session. We'll put it up on Canvas. We'll put it up together with the, um, um, with the task zero sheet. Um, and uh, you are asked to just simply give it a try. There are further uh, tutorials on Rhino. Um, on our DRH webpage, and there are plenty of tutorials, of course, simply just online that you can look up. All of the um, computers here at the architecture school do have Rhino. Um, you can also download it on your own computer, and I think for students it's a 30-day free test version. Um, but I'd suggest you maybe just get started here. Um, and my suggestion is to do this straight away because initially we were planning to have workshop introductions um, in the, to the wood and metal workshop, but they unfortunately are now going to start at 2 o'clock. So you've got a little bit of time um, till, um, till then, and my suggestion is to team up in groups, uh, see where you can find a free computer. There are some downstairs in your design studio, and then, of course, we've got the um, computer labs on level five, uh, which you're able to use. So I'm kind of suggesting team up maybe in teams of three or four and just go through this, familiarize yourself with Rhino and the surface. Uh, don't get too frustrated if you don't get it straight away. It's actually fairly um, straightforward, and if you follow this tutorial again, you should be able to um, to produce produce this model. This is a first tryout, so it's not going to be marked or anything. It's really um, an introduction into uh, into the scale that we will be operating in, into one, into the core program that we will be using for designing Rhino, and um, it's also trying to get your head around this aspect of how physical and digital comes together. Are there any general questions? Yeah. Yeah, it's there's you can get a 30-day free uh, test version. That's the only way, uh, and of course, then there are other ways. But yeah, or 
from DRH side. Is anyone still here? Um, you, you are able to access Rhino through the, the version of uh, the university version of Rhino through uh, uh, through your computer um, uh, is a little bit tricky, but that is an option as well, and we can introduce some, that option later to you as well. Yeah. Get started here on the university computer simply and try the 30-day version and then move your way forward from then. Yeah? Yeah? You've got... It, this runs till one? No, that's what I'm saying. Uh, we had scheduled uh, intros into the wood workshop. They, they would start later at 2 o'clock today. Um, so you have got some time available now. My suggestion is to sit in front of a computer, familiarize uh, yourself with, with Rhino. Yeah? Okay. Good. So then we will see each other on Tuesday next week at 9 o'clock, uh, divided up into the different workshop groups. And please bring your digital and your physical paper model along. All right. Good, thank you very much. Well done. Oh, good. This is my first uh, time teaching in like four, four months. <laughs> A little stutter at the beginning. No, no, good. Um, we now need to get this uploaded on um, on, um, uh, on Canvas. Yeah. Uh, Luke is in charge of the recording, right? Yeah, I think it's... Oh, I, I should stop it.